The ecological restoration process for a post oak savanna can take many years. There's multiple steps involved. One of the primary challenges with post oak savanna is the amount of fire suppression that's occurred over the last 100, 150 years and the increase in both tree density and brush species that have grown up in the savanna, converting it from a open, almost like a prairie with trees to a woodland or forest. The post oak savanna is thought of as a transition zone from the grasslands further west and the forests that are further east. So a savanna is essentially a prairie with some trees, if you will. The first step in the process is to use mechanical brush management. And that typically involves using something like a forestry mulcher to go through the area and remove the above ground part of the shrubs, typically yopon, holly or eastern red cedar are the two main tree species that tend to reach high densities in these areas. So we use this mechanical equipment to go through and just kind of mulch it all up. And the great thing about this is it, it chews it up and spits the kind of woody debris back out on the ground, which covers the soil, you know, and then slowly degrades and adds nutrients back to it. Unfortunately, that doesn't kill the yopon that occurs in these savannas, so we need to follow back up with a herbicide treatment. We wait somewhere around six to 12 months for the yopon to regrow, so then we go back through and we spray those individual plants with a herbicide to actually kill them. Then, depending on the site history of the property, whether it was heavily overgrazed before the brush densities increased, or whether it was not grazed, there may or may not be sufficient diversity and abundance of native grass seed in the seed bank. So sometimes we'll reseed an area with native grass just to kind of jumpstart the process. Sometimes we won't know. We often wait and see and see what it looks like before we do that. And then within a couple of years, we look to conduct a prescribed fire. Prescribed fire is a really important tool to use in this landscape to manage the restored conditions that we're trying to create. The mechanical brushwork and the chemical brush control can cost anywhere between $1,000 to $1,400 per acre, whereas fire can be as cheap as $30 an acre to implement on the land. So once we've invested all that money into restoring the property to the point where it can be managed with fire, we like to maintain it with fire in the long run, and that has numerous ecological benefits. So this is an area that had a prescribed fire in early January of just this year. So it's been about four months since the prescribed fire was conducted. And you can see all the regrowing forbs and little blue stem clumps here. It's almost like the, the burn never happened. It's amazing. The space between the clumps has really opened up. It's burned off all the old vegetation and allowed a lot of sun to hit the ground to generate growth in a bunch of new plants that just wouldn't have been able to outcompete the grasses here before. And when you burn an area like this that hasn't been burned in a while, it creates a lot of space between the clump grasses for other types of plants to grow. In the post oak savanna, in this sandy country, we have a lot of plants that grow nowhere else. So one of the species we can see right here that has come up since the burn is called Centerville Brazos Mint, or I like it because of its other name, which is rattlesnake flower, because the seed heads, when they're coming up, look like the rattle on a rattlesnake. And this is found in only a couple of counties in the post oak savanna here in central Texas. It has this beautiful purple flower, and we see a big patch of it all, all around me here. And this has come up this year and probably only came up because we burned off a lot of the old material that allowed it to get sun and, and to grow this year. This is really exciting. This species was not reseeded. This has come up from the seed bank. This is something that has directly benefited from the result of the fire. And this is one of our plants on the species of greatest conservation need list. And then over here, we have an example of an area where the canopy cover is just a little bit too high for some of the grasses to get going. You can see there's a handful of bunch of grasses that are coming up, but this canopy cover here is probably still 70, 80, 90%, which just doesn't allow enough light to get to the ground to allow these grasses to really kind of make a rebound. Even though we've gotten rid of the understory here, the canopy is still too high. To reduce the canopy, we need to selectively remove some trees. You can do this by cutting them down or by girdling the trunks to kill the tree. 
So this is a really good example of how we were able to remove the brush density and reduce the canopy cover to the point where it's around 50 to 60%, which is sufficiently enough light to hit the ground for the bunch grasses and the other species that require more of an open landscape to do their thing. And you can really see that here with the amount of grass that's regenerated on the ground. Post oak savanna was typically home to a very diverse community of plants and animals. For example, wild turkeys, bobwhite quail, Texas horn lizards, all these animals used to be very common in the post oak savanna historically. When that system was a mix of prairies and woodlands, that system supported more wildlife than it does today. One of the main goals of the post oak savanna restoration work is to support recovery of the Houston toad. So, Projects that are within the Houston Toad recovery zones are a high priority for us. So the counties we're talking about are Bastrop, Lee, Burleson, Milam, Robertson, and Leon counties, in addition to Lavaca, Colorado, and Austin counties. It's nine counties of the focal area for the Houston Toad restoration work we're trying to do. Texas Parks and Wildlife and the US Fish and Wildlife Service both run programs that will support private landowners to restore post oak savanna systems. We can provide anywhere from 50 to 75% cost share on the restoration work, which can be considerable. If you're a landowner that owns property and has deep sandy soil and is interested in this kind of restoration work, please reach out to us. We can be found via our website. You can reach out to your local district biologist. We'd love to arrange a site visit to come and talk to you about your management goals and how our programs can help you achieve those as well as support some of this wildlife we're really interested in supporting too. For more information and to find your local Texas Parks and Wildlife biologist, see the video description below.